Right, so today we are off to Paytm Protector in London. Um, I'm not entirely sure where in London. Um, I've ventured out of my comfort zone. I am, I've been on a train, well that was scary. Uh, I'm currently walking through the middle of South London, um, which is also quite scary. Um, but luckily I've got Charlotte here to look after me. Say hello Charlotte. Hello. So hopefully we're gonna make it there in one piece. Um, we don't get lost. It's funny, walking like two and a half kilometers to walk across country course is not a problem at all, it's fine. But walking a kilometre and a half through the middle of London seems to be miles and miles and miles. So hopefully we're going to get there soon. We finally made it to Paty Protector in New Cross, yes. just off Old Kent Road, um, South London, which is traditionally where Hatters, well, as an industry, have been based for, for generations, isn't it? Yeah. And Paty's themselves have been here in this area for over 200 years now. And you guys took over, how long guys have you been here? We, we've been in this specific building, we've been here for about two years. Josh and I have been involved for around about six years now. Uh, we started in Forest Hill, which is a little bit further southeast. But the business has always been around Elephant and Castle, Old Kent Road, yeah. South London. So Hatters or South London trade. Yeah, and you've stayed traditional to the cause, yeah. which um, from what I've seen, I've obviously stalked your Facebook, had a look through your um, website, found out everything I can about the Protector brand and the hats and Patey themselves. Um, so Patey, you do, with Patey, you do an awful lot of, as well as your the Beagler hats and the the showing hats, you do an awful lot of just dress hats as well, don't you, yeah. through them, um, well, top hats and... Top hats, bowler hats, we make all the military officer hats. We make all the for, guys the, for the British Army. For the British yeah. Army, and uh, we do it for other forces as well, Ireland, um, and a couple of European. We also do things like for the Canadian forts, we will do the Shaco hats, you know, so they'll want like 80 for the fort. Yeah. Um, we also do tricons, bicons, anything that you can imagine a proper functional hat to be, we can make here. So, for example, I got off the train at London Bridge today, walked outside, and straight away bumped into four people trying to encourage me to come to London's scariest attraction or something, something yep. to do with the Tower of London. Yeah. And they were wearing tricorn hats. Yep. Would those be the sort of things that you, I well, mean, they The didn't. ones that those guys will be yeah, wearing at London Bridge will be like a 50 pound hat if yeah. you're lucky. But uh, our but ones- that the style. Yes, we do the proper, real heavy, the, Cost around about twelve hundred pounds to make them. They're very, very expensive, but they are very ceremonial. Yeah. And to do them properly, it takes time. To make a proper traditional style hat takes can take us up to two or three months, yeah. depending on the type of hat. For something like an old traditional uh, Formula One helmet, I'll wait till the phone goes. So for something like a traditional Formula One helmet that we would do for Stalin Moss, yeah. you're looking up to like three or four months to make wow. one of them because the various layers that have to be dried take so long to dry yeah. and they have to be so hard that you can't have it going out being any, any no, way soft. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the, the original side of the business, yeah. painted, and you've now moved on to an even higher level of safety headwear now with yeah. Protector yeah. brand. Um, and I believe I've been hearing as well that you're now updating the Protector hat as well yeah. to um, to bring it more in line with the, the new safety standards that Snelfs have certainly brought out. Yeah. Um, I believe you're going to be one of the first, if not the first, to meet that Snell yes. 2016 well, standard. Is the, that? the issue with Snell is that uh, Snell are much of a higher safety rating yeah. than we're used to in Europe and in BSI as well because they've got much higher impact management. And they updated the standards to actually follow more the shape of the European style helmets. Yeah. So the 2001 and 2016 actually in strength and impact are exactly the same. It's just about changing the shape to work for the European market. And so is this now looking more in depth, say the European market, so looking more into literally the genetic shape of of the head, as it yeah. were, because every nation, every you, continent has a slightly different genetic code. And yeah, if you've got a hat that's tested out in the Far East, most likely it's been tested for the shape of an Eastern style head, which can often be quite a wider oval. Yeah. Uh, what we're used to in Britain and Europe is a long oval, yeah. and that's what we're used to. So our helmets are more constructed 
to fit that shape. Obviously, we can augment them to work for different people, mm. so we're not limited in that regard. But most helmets are built, uh, are, are tested and built in the same places, and we get that accreditation. So us using an American safety rating falls more in line with our heads, and they would rather it would be more the kind of Western stuff in yeah. the sense that we can. I suppose there is a greater proportion of riders in the Western market than there is. Yeah, there's also cost as well. Um, I think availability in other countries of buying something extremely cheap yeah. that will perform its function once it and then is, yeah, is right away. Yeah. Interesting thing, that something I discovered whilst let's say, looking you up online, um, Protector offer a service to actually check your hat for its safety. So if you do have a fall that's not a potentially a life-threatening impact, mm. Um, significant enough to, to cause injury, but you can actually send your hat back to you guys for you yeah. to check and give it a full health check, is that yeah. correct? Well, you can come up and see us at one of the shows, or because right, so, it's a quite a quick thing for us to do. Yeah. Uh, we take the helmet apart, which we know how to do quite quickly. Uh, fiberglass and polystyrene, which are uh, EPS, what we use, it's built two main components of the helmet, show up damage extremely easily. Yeah. If you get if you, if you don't see it on the outside, you will definitely see it on the inside. Uh, the and when you say inside, do you mean actually on the inside of the helmet underneath yep, the, the mesh that we see, or do you mean actually taking it apart inside we'll between the two we'll layers? We'll show you a little bit later on, uh, but yeah. you'll see on the actual fiberglass it will show damage and actually on the polystyrene itself. If it's a significant proper fall, you will see damage on both of those areas. Yeah. Now, what most helmets don't match is if you can actually drop a plastic standard helmet for most manufacturers from here to here and it will damage the helmet yeah. to the point that you can't wear it anymore. Whereas with one of our helmets they know we can drop it from there to there and it's not going to damage the fiberglass unless it was on some serious like, yeah, razor edge, yeah, yeah. <laughs> a very damaging surface. But you'll see later on that we put them through different different surfaces, proper rigorous testing multiple times and we know that our helmets survive and don't deliver the half necessarily anywhere near the same amount of damage due to your yeah. cranial area than another half is. So again, what we're finding more and more as we visit these manufacturers is the depth of knowledge behind the behind the product itself. Um, so we have already had a look at manufacturing on a larger scale, um, down with Charles Owen. Um, you guys are more hands-on, it seems. Um, so, I'd love to have a look around and see what you can show us. Cool, smash it. Please come. So the interior of our helmets is <coughs> made. This is obviously the older design. This isn't the new one that we're yep. looking at on the screen. This is a much older design done with different riveting, different di uh, different buckle we used in the older helmets as well. But the same interior is the same. We use carbon fiber, Kevlar, and fiberglass. So the carbon fiber Kevlar mix here, as you see, it's carbon fiber going one way, Kevlar going the other way. That allows a lot of strength and a little bit of flex as well, which is important. Flex stops shattering and cracking. So when this can move in and flex like this, obviously with a liner it won't move at all. But with that will not shatter and splay off like plastic will. Plastic will just break mm. in pieces. Yeah, crack and flex pretty Yeah, yeah, just, I mean, you can drop plastic like that. And that'll be it soon. Yeah, and I can feel comfortable doing that because I'll show you in a minute, but fiberglass really shows up when it's damaged. So using that, that allows us a lot much of a stronger body than most people. So this interior has been carried over into a newer model, which I can show you the interior of here. So this is the Mark II we were this is the Mark II, and also what we've updated from the system is the venting. The issue with the old style of venting is it was done with a diamond router, and to the best will in the world, you can there can still be a bit of movement in these, which can allow these to not be perfectly equal all the time, which is something we always have to watch out for on our side. Uh, so a better way to do it is we developed a series of jigs that will go over the top of the helmet securely and allow us to go in with a hand-guided Dremel tool and drill 
the vents in by hand. Because all of these shells are finished by hand, aren't they? Yeah, everything. Everything's is assembled by hand. So the he the the manufacturer of the shells forms it on the jig. It comes to you, and then from there on, it's hand manufactured. Every, even down to like when the guys are making it on the molds, they're hand doing it. There's no yeah. machines that get involved in. The only machine that gets really involved in these at any point is the hand guided Dremel tool, yeah. which is still hand guided. With because we're a traditional hat makers, everything has to be done properly by hand. If you do it, if you allow machines to automate some manufacturing, anything can go wrong. It, that's why they have to have such strict. So that you've got human quality. supervision on every aspect of the manufacturing. Quality control comes at every single stage of yeah. the helmet. So I mean, we we've developed from when we bought in the shells. We was PT. When we had to get into the world of safety, which is around about five years ago, we this was the original incarnation of what we'd been bought in, and we had to buy it in because we couldn't make plastic. Yeah. And when we got involved with Protector, we went away from this plastic shell and into what Ian had at the time, which was a fiberglass shell, and we were able to build this, which is a hell of a lot stronger and it's a lot more aesthetically pleasing than what we were able to create. The problem with these ones, they were a bit, very uncomfortable, I found, um, and they were too high. Yeah, so there was too much space above. Yeah, yeah. and it, it, it sort of like there wasn't enough space for the head to go into the shell, but then when you did put it on, it looked sort of giant. And what I liked about the protectors was they were more sleeker to the head. And it's evolving that sleekness to like a more slender shape, which is what we're more used to in a traditional hat that, that we've been pushing to. And with a venting system like this, you're looking at a much more understated way of like getting the airflow. It's not like push right in yeah. the front, you know. And having nothing on the front means that we can do some nice paintwork here. We can also do some nice Swarovski designs around like there and also at the back as well. So as well as keeping the safety, the British safety standards that we're used to, you know, Benefiting from over here, you can get some of that European ostentation yeah. as well. You can have it looking like a, looking a bit more Italian. Yes, for example. Like, let's just like, we'll say still Italian. Sure it'll save you. Yes, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. The big important thing is I've seen with so many helmets is the testing system that BSI use and the European standards use is a free fall test that lands on things. Why I go for Snell is that the impact management of Snell is so much higher. They have to. It has to be specifically guided fold onto specific shapes at various points of the helmet. So the one helmet will get battered to bits four or yeah. five times. And I'll show you one that I've got. That's brilliant. And is this one of the, this is one of the new ones, isn't it? Yep, this is one of our new ones. past the Snell 2016. Yep, it's got accreditation for Snell 2016. So that'll be the one that's coming out for this year. And you can see, and if you come around here, Interior-wise, for a uh, safety, we have to put a lot of different things. This will be what the standard uh, padding system will be now, which is a series of ballistic plastic. This material is. Won't we'll give it its actual name, just in case anyone steals it. But it's a uh, very strong plastic. It's designed that when you hit it, it hardens so that none of the shock force gets through. To is you. this the um, is this the material I've seen demonstrated where they hit it with a hammer? Yes. Where you push it with your hand and you can squeeze straight into it yep. and you hit it with a hammer and it just goes rigid. And yep. Yeah. They're using it in a, a few body protectors for motorcycles. This one specifically is a motorcycle product. But we can see if we look inside the helmet what happens when you get a serious accident. The, all the chop strand from the fiberglass breaks. On the exterior we can see a huge crack and you also see a massive level of impact. Now this is was done on a horseshoe and we can see that it goes all the way through there but the actual head itself got very little impact there was like about shock force of g was about 110 which the actual load is about 260 so we're looking like because snow is the is the highest isn't it at 260 yeah well they they just ex they will just expect the helmet to perform better under more circumstances. Yeah. The idea between most helmets that to get past is that if they just break on their impact but they don't deliver the shock force to the head, they've done the job. Yeah. With Snell, they wanted to do that once, twice, 
and possibly third and fourth turn. Well, I well. suppose there's potential for multiple impact in a fall, isn't there? First, you can fall off a horse, you can hit the ground with your head, yep. you can then slide into an obstacle, mm -hmm. for example, a cross country jump, mm -hmm. and then have a horse land on it as well. So you've potentially got three impacts in one fall. Yes. So, yeah. You, I mean, it, I mean it, we've seen the horror stories. I weekly get people who send me photos of their accidents and their survivals. I mean, most of the time it's, it's always to tell me, the doctor's told me to get in touch with you because you saved my life. Or the other time it is, I've broke my hat, can you replace it please? Yeah. Uh, and they will send me the, the accidents they have. Yeah. And you get big scars across the face, this and that, but the head's fine. Yeah. And that's exactly what we want to do. And it's only under the, the serious of falls that these helmets break. Yeah. And that's what we're trying to do here. I, I don't like the fact that in this industry, you can go to the drills in a moment. I don't like the fact that in this industry that there's such a throwaway culture involved in their safety. You, you can buy a helmet from most manufacturers. It costs you 250 to 300 pounds. It might look nice from afar, up close with a little bit rougher on the edges, but it's designed to do its job. Now, if it's after that's job, you're now going to pay another 300 pounds to replace something that is to protect your life. I think it's just ludicrous. So our idea here is that you, have, you can buy something that will last you a few falls, Sure, it might get a bit damaged around the paintwork and things like that. Mm. The actual helmet itself is designed to provide you with safety time and time again. And that's what we're trying to push out through here. Unless, of course, you have something that you can dive in. Yeah, then so unless you have a significant fall. Yeah. Yeah, you yeah. Could, it, it, it will cope another one because that's what it's tested for. It's tested to take multiple impacts yeah. and still provide the, the protection. Yeah. So have you got one of these that's, that's got the lining inside it so we can see what could have happened? Yeah, of course, I've got another one you've talked about. This one? That's this one here. So, you're looking, this is a smaller one here. So this one, having a look at it, what was it put onto? It was done on a Hemi. A Hemi is a round surface like that. Um, so the three surfaces it goes on to are a flat metal surface, you'll see this in our safety video we put up, uh, a sharp horseshoe like, but, and then a curved surface. Then on a curved surface you can see where the first impact happens and then where it trails off around the outside and causes an impact but not too much damage. Now the liner itself, itself is hugely damaged, you can see a big flat mark there that mark there, but I'll give this to you and you can just put your hand around the inside. Does it feel any different? No, it feels still smooth and consistent. Too. But you look inside this thing, Yeah. I mean, there's a big crack there, there's a big white patch there, I mean, what? How that's how you know fiberglass is damaged. The fiberglass shows up, fiberglass has got an awful see-through look to it that you can see there, so all, almost like if you held it up to the light you would be able to see through yeah. it. And what happens when fiberglass takes any sort of damage is it comes up this patch of white colour and that's how we're able to tell that there is a significant amount of damage to it. Also that, and then if you pull the liner out yeah. and you yeah. see it. I mean if you're thinking of that as being, the, you know, you've somebody's forehead, yeah. yeah, that's uh But you can see that's the round surface there, so it's a perfectly round head. So even though that helmet's taking that impact, that round actual shape is still impacted onto there and it's still at the front as well but you'd survive this and you'd come away with probably a wee bit of a headache as you would yeah. imagine you would but you won't come away with a TBI which yeah. is what we want to avoid. This is our cross country edition of our new hat which uh, will come under three new model names so everyone knows it as the cross country no, yeah. competitor oh, yeah. which is with the yeah, time of yeah, lines. The that's, that's the one you did for me, isn't it? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And we've got an ultimate, which has got the diamante and two types of finish. And then you've got the international. So with the new one, you will have the cross country Mark II, which is essentially just a basic model, no bells, bells, whistles, no yeah. bells and whistles, but it does. it's the same technology that's in all the hats. The next model up will be the competitor Edge just because it's edgier and cooler and the ultimate is becoming the ultimate advantage and it's just a little bit more nicer and the custom thing. So yeah, I'll give you this one so you can use for your test and we've got another one there for you there. Brilliant. 
But let us know how you're testing it. Yeah, well, as soon as we've got the footage together. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, I can't at this stage tell you exactly what I'm going to do to them. Okay. Um, but there is going to be an impact and a crush test involved. Right? Uh, it's not... It's going to be real world. It's not going to be scientific. It's going to prove the validity of the hat, basically. It's not going to be recreatable in exact circumstances. So it should be quite entertaining as well. I like it. I like it. Yeah. Brilliant. Thanks so much, guys. No worries. Uh,